which is the uh, <laughs> Voyager Loyalty Program re relaunch. And uh, I was a part of this today. It was uh, me, CJ from Record Rebellion, and uh, Steve, the CEO of uh, Voyager. And we just talked about a couple of things. First, it wasn't just about the Voyager Loyalty Program. And in actuality, we talked about a lot of different things. First up, uh, we talked about, let me bring this. This was brought to my attention. I, I kind of just glanced over this, but there was uh, a Voyager raised 100 million by uh, private placement. So a lot of institutions, a lot of hedge fund managers, a lot of big players in the space that I can't tell you who it was, but it was a lot of people with a lot of money. We'll just say that. And when we were talking to Steve off camera, uh, he just says, hey, this is this is pretty big for us. And and now that I have this, you know, a, a new war chest of uh, different money, we can invest into the uh, more so in the infrastructure, even more than we've already done. So when I was thinking about this and I saw this, I was like, okay, Steve, that's great that they invest into that. And I asked them before camera and I asked them on camera and I will link this, this uh, interview at the, at the end. But I said, I'm worried because, you know, you have to understand like, like Alex and CJ and of course, Steve, they're all institution side, right? And I'm all, I am just retail. I'm just like you. I just, I don't have a ton of money. I just do my, do my best. And I'm like, when I see a bunch of institutions coming in, and they're investing into, uh, I mean, Bitcoin is one thing. They're going to put on their treasury and their, and their uh, balance sheet. Sure, I'm good with that. But when I see a bunch of people come in and they're investing into VGX, into Voyager, and what's going on, I'm like, what do you mean about that? It, is, is for, the, for us, is that going to be like a big rug pull at some point? They're going to invest into, well, first, they're going to invest into Voyager, the company, the public traded company. But that's going to go a long way for, you know, uh, for VGX and the token. He goes, no, he goes, he goes, these guys, and just watch the video. He's like, a lot of them come to me and go, you know what? We've got no short position. Uh, we've tried it. Didn't work out too hot for us. We don't have that, um, that confidence to go around this round with you. So we are going to be in here for the long haul. And I asked him, what was the sentiment? I mean, how'd you feel about it? How, wh wh what'd you get from him? He goes, you know what? All these guys are solid. All these guys and gals are solid. And they really want to partner with us because they see the future. And he goes, and that's what we're really uh, impressed about. They brought in a lot of money. He goes, we had to stop. He goes, I'm sure we'll do another funding at some point. He goes, but uh, that's what we got. So to me, I'm like, that's great. If you got a lot of people who are, again, smart money, hopefully smarter than JP Morgan. Uh, and they say, hey, we see wh where things are going. We want to be a part of this train. Uh, Let's just game on. I'm down with that. So there was that part. The second thing that was asked was, of course, the waiting list. I know uh, if you're on the waiting list, uh, sorry, it is what it is, right? And uh, he broke down some numbers. He goes, look, we've got about 106 million. No, sorry, 106,000, 106 million, Jesus. 106,000 uh, funded accounts that were actively trading before everything went off with Wall Street bets. And, uh, and then we got this massive influx of around 250,000 in four days. He goes, we didn't see that coming. He goes, but now we see exactly where we're going. And, and he's like, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna upgrade, we're gonna do some infrastructure and things like that. And I was like, okay, Steve, that's great. You know, you're talking about infrastructure and doing these things. This is the same thing he told us last time. So I need specifics, man. And you gotta tell me what, what's going on. Not that he owes me anything. I just asked the questions, right? And he goes, yeah, yeah. He goes, fair enough. He goes, to alleviate the problems, he goes, we brought in the team from Uber. Uber had the same type of issue. They had a massive scaling issue and they had to bring in some, some really uh, high tech, high, high speed individuals. And it was a big, massive team. He goes, we're bringing that same team in. And he said, what our goal is, is for 10 million users. 10 million users. 10 million users. He goes, so, you know, we have 106,000 funded right now. We got, you know, 240 that, that came in. He goes, but we see 10 million. Okay. So, uh, so we talked about that. I, I, sorry, I can't stress that enough. I mean, 10 million, uh, that's a ton. Like I, I think Robin Hood, we're thinking at uh, six, 8 million, somewhere around there. He's thinking about 10 million and he's talking about this year. That's pretty big. So what does that mean for the token? Well, first of all, uh, I asked him a question. I go, Steve, what about this ERC 20? Cause your, your VGX token is it's an ERC 20. And right now that's bad news, not bad news, but it's, it, it's expensive. And I said, what, how about transferring it over to a Cardano or some other network? And he goes, you know what? He goes, we're thinking about that. He goes, we could do that. And now that we have 100 million, we have a lot of options to do it. He goes, but we're also looking at Algo because that's one of our partners. And uh, he goes, we might do one of those things. He goes, uh, it's up in the air right now. I was like, okay, great. 
So that was just that part. Pretty happy about that. Now let's get into the very next part, which I think is probably the, the more important one, which is the loyalty program, because that's what it really all comes around to. And if you haven't been around for why I talk about these loyalty program and tokenomics and utility, then I just have to ask you a question. What do you invest in and what does that token do? Like right now, today, what does it actually do for you? You know, I, I don't know what you're invested into, like uh, tomato coin puts marinara on the block. I don't know what it is. But what does your token do? What is it doing? What are people building on it? And if you can't really answer that question, then it is a highly speculative asset, right? But if it's actually doing something that puts you out, you know, that, that much farther. I want to show you. So the question to me always is, why is Binance coin going up so much? It doesn't make any sense, right? What does it do? Is it a currency? Eh, not really. You know, what is it just, you know, for the, for the, the, uh, the exchange? Well, here's the thing. Uh, Binance coin has gone up uh, amazingly uh, in the last, well, let's just take, let's just take seven days, 14%. 14 days has been up 200% in two weeks, 200%. 30 days, 253, and a year 424. Why has that happened? It's because of utility. Utility and what it does. So if you own a bunch of, or just you own, you own BNB coin, right? And we, we covered this a couple of days ago. I'm not going to beat this down to the pulp, but you can save on fees. You can stake it. You get a, a good interest rate. You've, um, what else is there? There's launch pools. So the more you have, the more that the, the newer type of crypto that comes out, you can actually uh, get pieces of that. Uh, lock staking, DeFi staking, um, rewards just for the amount of Binance coin that you have. And then for Binance, let me see here. I forgot the market cap. I don't care. Circulating supply uh, is 147 and the max supply is 179, 179 million. So again, the more that is locked up, uh, the more that if, if you take a lot of it off the market and there's still the same demand, what does that mean? That means the price goes up, right? Because everybody wants Binance coin because they want to lower their fees and everything we just talked about. So that's a utility and that's what we're talking about. And that's what we talked about uh, actually, let me see if I can pull this. When I talked about the whole value proposition for, for Voyager and we talked about this in depth, you can watch the video, I'll link it at some point somewhere. <laughs> But it, it's just where I, my price prediction of why I think it's going to 29 cents to 30. Mind you, that 29 cents was on January 7th, and we're at 350 right now, somewhere around. So it all comes down to the utility, right? What is it being? The tokenomics, Metcalf's law, the more connections that you have, the network effect, blah, 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 right? Okay, got you. So the more people we have, the better off we are. So what, are those, what makes Voyager have that tokenomics? And why is it so, why am I so excited about it? Well, it's because the Voyager loyalty program that Steve talked about today. So this was the old one, okay? This is not the one that we're talking about, but I want to compare it to what he told us it would be. And this, this new one was going to come out in like the next 30 days, I think he said, 30 to 45, I forgot. So there's three tiers in the old one, there's three tiers in the new one. And the problem with this one is like, people were like, well, hold on, if the different rewards, it's only 25 Voyager tokens or 50 or 100, what does that do? Because that doesn't really lock things up. It's not like that's a ton to lock up. So who cares, right? If we need a, a lot of these to be locked up, just like, you know, other places, I suppose. And the more that you lock up, again, uh, the better off your debit card fees, referral bonus rewards, withdrawal fee savings, interest booster, all that stuff will do, which is good, you know, but it really doesn't do much for the value of the token. It's, it's okay for everything else. So Steve listened to the team to everybody, and he brought it back to his team, excuse me, and he said, this is what he said. So let us bring this out. So first of all, these numbers are gonna change drastically. And he said, right now, preliminary, it's gonna be for the first level, it's 500 Voyager tokens. Next level is gonna be 5,000, and the third and top tier is gonna be 20,000. That's a lot of tokens. So some people are like, well, dang it, now I can't get in this, in, into, this, uh, into this tier. I want them lower. You can't have it both ways. You can't have it both ways. So if you want this to be locked up, this is what it's going to have to be. And uh, so another thing is this. There are no free rides. So, I mean, my whole portfolio has taken me years to accumulate. Dollar cost averaging. And sometimes it sucks because you just see everything go down. Sometimes it's good. But over the last two and a half years, it was pretty awful, right? We, we all went through 2018, 2019. And here we are in 2020, then 21. 
So it's pretty tough to go through all these things. There is, again, there is no pleasure without a little bit of pain. And this is where we're at. So when people talk about, oh, now I can't get to it. Well, just start investing. Dollar cost averaging or value cost averaging. It's up to you. Uh, that's just how it goes. So then, so we talked about that. Uh, I talked to him about there's going to be a potential uh, crypto to stock option. So you're going to be able to take, uh, and, he, and he verified it. We're, it's in the pipeline. We're going to do it. You're going to be able to take crypto, like a Bitcoin and exchange it, swap it out for a Tesla stock, just like that. And then, of course, the more Voyager tokens you have, the less the fees are and so on and so forth. So that's good. And then, so my big thing was, well, what's, can we stake it? And he said, yeah, we can stake it at 7%. And I go, well, that's that's great, but then that's going to be inflationary because we're just going to keep, you know, building up more, more tokens. And he goes, oh, no, no. He goes, we're also going to be burning everything that, that we take back as far as fees and Voyager. We'll be burning 25%. He said, I don't know if it's going to be monthly or quarterly, but we're going to burn tokens so we can keep it deflationary. Like, great. That sounds good to me. And he, and he talks about the debit and credit cards, uh, which didn't really give too many details about that. But I would assume the more Voyager tokens that you have, the more cashback rewards you get. Also more on savings on, on withdrawals, uh, even more so. And I will say this, I, I did talk to Steve because there was a complaint about, hey, you've got the, to, to withdraw ADA Cardano at 20. And then he listened to everybody and he dropped it. So that was good. It's still a little bit high on some points, I will admit, but uh, that is what it is. So savings on withdrawals. And somebody said, well, who cares? Because Celsius doesn't charge us anything to, to withdraw uh, you know, cryptocurrency. True, they don't. But you want to buy some crypto on Celsius? Good luck. It's like three and a half percent, and uh, you can do that all day long. I'm not uh, big into that, but uh, I like Celsius. I own Celsius. I got a lot of not a lot. I got fifteen percent of my portfolio in Celsius, and I'm gaining yield. I think it's great for that. But I'm not going to buy crypto on it. And then they talked about BIP or uh, basic pricing or uh, base points. So like whatever you actually. So he talks about. Voyager is a broker. They will find the best price for you in exchange, depending. It's not always going to be the fantastic great price, but it's pretty good so far. I can tell you it's way better than Coinbase. And then on top of that, depending on your level, you're also going to get uh, base points back for whatever you spent. So the more you trade, the more you actually get back. And then um, oh, the uh, 106,000 funded accounts. So I think just take a look at this real quick and just think to yourself, how does this compare with, with a Binance, with another type of a uh, token like a Swiss Borg or something like that? Do you think that this token could compete with uh, a Binance token and what it does? And do you think it'll stay at $3.48 for 2021? Let me just think of the comment section. And uh, that is essentially it for that piece.